Okay, so we've come across two different kinds of spectrum. We've come across this continuous spectrum of like a full rainbow of light that you'd expect to see if you have something that's hot and opaque, like an old-fashioned light bulb or a heated metal nail. We've also seen this other kind of spectrum where you see these bright lines which are caused by specific elements or certain chemical elements and in particular, we see those bright lines whenever we have a hot gas instead of like a hot, opaque material like a hot metal. So if there's a hot gas, we see these, these lines, which is in sort of fluorescent light bulbs, neon lights, and also in, in nebulas out in space. What's interesting is that stars have both kinds of spectrum in them. So this is a, a spectrum of the sun, and you can see that it has the continuous rainbow because we can't see through the sun. It is sort of opaque to us. So it does create this hot rainbow of light, all the colors of the rainbow. And it's peaked somewhere in sort of yellow-green for the sun because it's so hot, a few thousand degrees. But because the sun's surrounded with a cloud of gas, it also has these sort of lines in it, which tells us about the chemical elements. All right, so it's kind of cool that the sun has both kinds of spectrum. What I want to do is I just want to, I want to give you a, a mental picture to have in mind when you think about these lines because they're really important as we learn things later in the course um, they help us do lots of things for starters though they what they really represent is like a fingerprint and every chemical element has its own unique fingerprint so for example hydrogen gas has this unique fingerprint of a line in the red a line in the blue and two lines in the purple and helium gas has its own unique fingerprint. It has more lines, a red, a yellow line, like three blues and a couple purples. And their location, their exact wavelength is the same in any lab anywhere in the world. It's, it's, it's unique to that chemical element. Now, let's just look at hydrogen and say, where do these particular lines come from? It comes from our understanding, well, it comes from the atom itself. So here's a really simple model of an atom and hydrogen's a really simple element, so that makes it easier for us. Hydrogen is just a proton, and it has an electron that orbits around it. And the electron can orbit in a few different possible orbits. Each of those orbits has a is different energy. So, like, it takes more energy for it to orbit way out here, we could say. Now, let's see. In order for an electron to move between these orbits, it has to either emit some light or it has to absorb some light. It has to get rid of some energy, or it has to um, absorb some energy. So check it out. If something gives the electron a bunch of energy, let's just say somehow it gets some energy, and it moves way out here to this orbit, it'll stay there for a little while, but then it will automatically just emit. You saw it emitted some light, and it jumped down to a lower energy. It'll do the same thing again. It emitted some light and jumped down to a lower energy. This is where those lines come from. So let's just say I put it way out here. Now, what color of light is it giving off? Well, when it jumps down, it gives off kind of a reddish light. It jumps down again. It gives off a little longer wavelength red light. Again, it gives off kind of one of those purple light. So you're seeing how like um, the, the very specific wavelength of light that's given off by hydrogen has to do with the very specific energy between these orbits. And that never changes for hydrogen, so those, those very specific wavelengths never change. So we would see these emission lines of light. This is the kind of case where we would see um, this kind of spectrum, hydrogen emission lines, we call them. So when you see like a neon lamp, that's like an open sign on a store, that's, that's a particular gas in there. It could be neon or it could be hydrogen or helium inside the glass tube and they're pulsing a ton of electricity through it to give those elements a lot of energy and then when they drop down again they shine off the lights where the light comes from now the absorption lines though that we see for the sun where the light is being absorbed at those, those is the same kind of idea so instead of it getting energy I could just shine light at this electron and if I shine the right kind of light very specific wavelengths of light it could be absorbed so check it out let's say I shine this very specific kind of purple light at it, you see that was just the right wavelength to cause it to jump up to this higher energy level or higher orbit. But if I shined a color that was just slightly different, just a little different shade of purple, oh, it passes right by. It has to be exactly the right shade of purple for it to get absorbed. And we see that in the spectrum of the sun, right? 
all these purples over here are not the right purple, but only that exact one purple is the right one. Okay, and so then uh, you get the idea how, how these wavelengths of light can be absorbed by the atom just as they can be emitted by the atom. So keep this picture in mind as you see more spectrum of stars and other things later on in the course.